Today we enjoy a level of comfort, convenience, and health that would have been unimaginable to even the wealthiest individuals 200 years ago. All of these are the result of the hard work and imagination of an entrepreneur. The achievements of this creative class deserve to be better known and celebrated. I want to emphasize four specific skills the entrepreneur uses to benefit all of us. First, the entrepreneur is an alert observer. As economist Israel Kirzner has emphasized, we don't live in the best of all possible worlds. Resources never have been, nor could they ever be, allocated optimally, as if the economy were a set of mathematical equations with a unique solution. Instead, the inefficiency of our current use of resources is an unavoidable fact of life. This implies there are numerous opportunities for improving resource use in even the most prosperous economy. And each of these potential improvements represents an opportunity for profit. In a dynamic economy, new opportunities like this are constantly emerging, even as others are disappearing. In order to take advantage of them, society needs the right observer in the right place at the right time. Here's a particularly good example of how that works. In 1886, a 24-year-old cigar salesman was walking down the street in Flint, Michigan, when a friend driving past in a horse-drawn cart recognized him and offered him a ride. Impressed by the way the carriage rode over the rough brick roads, the young man got out to inspect the suspension, discovered that it was very different than anything else on the road, and he knew a lot of people would want it if they knew about it. Through his travels as a cigar salesman, he was aware of a big trade show coming up in Madison, Wisconsin, and he felt sure that if he could exhibit this vehicle there, he could sell dozens of them. But in order to take advantage of his insights, he would have to act fast. Within five days, he'd visited the factory where the cart was made, negotiated the purchase price of $1,500 for the company and its patents, secured financing through the bank, established a partnership with an angel investor, acquired a spot at the trade show, and departed in the cart for Wisconsin. Just as he anticipated, the carriage was the hit of the show. Within 15 years, the company he purchased was selling $2 million worth of carriages and employing more than 1,000 workers. That young man's name was Billy Durant. And in the coming years, the company under his direction developed into one of the world's most successful corporations, General Motors. The story of Billy Durant illustrates why there really is no good substitute for entrepreneurial alertness. No planning agency or government-appointed minister can perform this function. Kirzner argues the best policy is to make sure that our social institutions encourage people to notice and act on opportunities that come their way. After all, we've got limited attention. We tend to notice things which it pays us to notice. High marginal tax rates, occupational licensing, rent controls, and similar policies increase the risks and reduce the rewards for entrepreneurship. Policies like this reduce entrepreneurial alertness. Opportunity may knock until the end of time, but if nobody's paying attention, it might as well not exist. Second, the entrepreneur is a risk taker. Entrepreneurs routinely enter unexplored economic territory. Any new business idea is essentially speculative. Before it's proven in practice, there's no guarantee that it really adds value to the economy. Even when the idea is perfectly sound, if executed properly, that proper method of executing it is itself an unknown. There's usually a great deal of experimentation and improvisation during the early stages of a business. In addition to the uncertainty surrounding their product and the methods of producing it, entrepreneurs must cope with risks entirely beyond their control. The emergence of a new competitor, a shift in consumer tastes, a general recession, other circumstances that are inherently unpredictable. If the entrepreneur is quick to learn and adapt, they may ultimately earn a good profit. Those who undertake these experiments extend our knowledge of what works and what doesn't. The entrepreneur is the residual claimant of the enterprise, meaning they obtain only what's left over after expenses have been paid. Suppliers, lenders, and employees typically have contracts that specify in advance the payment that each will receive for their participation. These expenses are contractual obligations. Revenue, on the other hand, depends on the preferences of the customer who's under no obligation to purchase these products. The entrepreneur gets to keep what's left over after the bills have been paid, if anything is left over. Most people 
are risk averse. They prefer a steady predictable income to one that's unpredictable and variable. We need people who are willing to assume that risk. Third, the entrepreneur is a leader. The efforts of entrepreneurs to maintain or increase profit can create resentment or criticism. From the perspective of the worker, decisions about employment and wages look like a simple bargaining issue of the zero-sum type. A bigger slice of pie for some means a smaller slice for others. But this is a poor analogy for what's really happening. An entrepreneur can only be successful in the long run by raising the productivity of labor. This higher productivity is what allows wages to rise over time. Income obtained from an enterprise is the result of cooperation among many different groups of people, including entrepreneurs, investors, employees, customers, and suppliers. In order for the enterprise to continue, each group must agree that their continued participation is preferable to their non-participation. Workers stay if they receive a combination of wages and job satisfaction that is better than their alternatives. Investors must receive a combination of risk, return, and liquidity that suits them better than their alternatives. Suppliers must obtain prices and volumes that are at least as good as they can find elsewhere. Even customers exercise a veto power over the continued existence of the enterprise. The price and quality of the firm's product must suit them better than alternatives offered by the competition. It's the task of the entrepreneur to harmonize these interests in a way that's satisfactory to all. As the great French economist Jean-Baptiste Say said, this requires a combination of moral qualities that are not often found together, judgment, perseverance, a knowledge of the world, as well as of business. The scarcity of this entrepreneurial ability helps to explain why business owners offer top dollar for managerial talent. Four. The entrepreneur is an inventor, an innovator. Any industry may go through extended periods in which competition is relatively stable and predictable. During these periods, the primary activity of entrepreneurs is imitation. Imitators take the current techniques and pattern of consumption for granted. The successful new entrants simply follow the model provided by earlier entrepreneurs. In this case, a lot of the uncertainty in that industry disappears, but so too does the profit. Profits fall because imitation leads to intense price competition that erodes profit margins. In order to earn extraordinary profit, an owner must be willing to separate their businesses from the pack. This requires that they experiment with unproven ways of doing things through invention or innovation. Invention involves the creation of a new product or process. Innovation is the improvement of existing products or processes and each of these spawns its own related industries and techniques while making the previous economic institutions obsolete. Many established businesses unable to adapt will not survive this transition. Capital and labor will be displaced as they flow away from the old industries into the new. Economist Joseph Schumpeter calls this process the wave of creative destruction. Though it often causes painful adjustments in the short run, it's an important driver of economic growth and increased living standards over time. It is difficult to exaggerate the role of the entrepreneur in promoting economic progress. We tend to take their contributions for granted because we do not often question the origin of the many useful goods and services that we enjoy every day. We should thank the anonymous entrepreneurs who brought them to us. We only have them because someone accepted the risks that would discourage most people because someone organized and directed resources to make them more productive. Because someone acted on an opportunity that perhaps only they were aware of. Or because someone developed a new technique or product that changed everything. Individuals seeking a meaningful and challenging way to benefit their community and their posterity could hardly find a better way to do it than to become an entrepreneur.